Hello, I'm Valerie Biden Owens, Chair of the Biden Institute at the University of Delaware. Today, I have the privilege of introducing Kate Gallego, Mayor of Phoenix, Arizona since 2019. Thank you, Mayor, for joining us on this episode of All Politics is Personal, a program where we introduce the public to the person behind the politician. We know anyone can research your policies and accomplishments, but that's not what we're about today. We're here to talk about you. Tell us, if you will, about growing up. What was your childhood like? So I was born and raised in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is a wonderful community, lots of open space and, and mountains nearby. I spent a lot of time playing different sports, uh, which I really enjoyed. I did have asthma growing up, and that was something that really pushed me in the direction I ended up going. When you're wheezing by the track and reflecting, it gets you interested in a variety of different things. And one of them for me was, I got very interested in environmental issues and then ended up going to college to get an environmental degree. Wow. Uh, did you have siblings? One brother. Uh, older or younger? Younger brother. And what's his name? Tom. Tom. And did you grow up in a multi-generational home or did, was it just mom and dad? Did you have, like in our home, we always had a relative who came to visit and stayed for a fortnight. Did that happen to you and your family? It was mostly just my parents, my brother and I. So we would visit our grandparents, but they were not always huge travelers. And so you went to school, you, you started out in track, at grade school or high school were you in running track? So I would say middle school was probably middle when school. I really got very involved. I did a lot of, my big support was, was softball. So I played junior Olympic softball. And a lot of my early memories of the city I now call home were on the softball fields. What position? The parks. So I played second base when we were doing the junior Olympic, the traveling softball, and then high school pitcher. Oh my gosh, that's, uh, they are two really, <laughs> they're tough spots. No one told me I was gonna grow up to be 5'4 and perhaps spending all my time on sports oh, well. wasn't the best decision. If, if someone had said, hey, you're gonna go be mayor, you should join speech and debate, that would've been very helpful to me. No, I think, you know what? Um, uh, I think playing sports and being a team player probably is one of the best things that you could have done. You're a, a leader on the field, and uh, you've apparently, uh, not apparently, you're obviously a leader off the field. Did you like school, the academic part of school? Very much so. I love reading, and that's, I think, always been a gift to me. When I speak to young people, I always talk about no matter where you end up, if you love reading, you can learn more about where you're going. I loved science as well, which isn't probably surprising for someone who went into the environmental. environmental. What kind of, uh, was it a public high school that you went to? No, I went to a uh, private school. Uh, what was that called? Albuquerque Academy. We were the Chargers. Oh, I see. Okay. I went to Ursuline Academy for young girls. Uh, it was the Ursuline nuns who taught us. It was a really fine education. All girls. I, was, I couldn't wait to get out of there to go to college. Where did you go to college? So I went to Harvard University, which was a big change from a, a pretty small high school in Albuquerque to go to the Boston area and a very cosmopolitan university. Did you know anybody else who went to Harvard? So there were other people from New Mexico who went, which was wonderful because you get so accustomed to the comforts of home, which if you're from New Mexico, green chili yeah. is a big one. They do not do green chili well in Boston, I will I'll have to say. Uh, uh, my youngest, or my husband's, uh, he, he makes me, uh, reminds me that we both had something to do with this. Our youngest child uh, went to Harvard and uh, she is the first person, we were so thrilled, she's the first person we ever met who really went to Harvard. And that was, <laughs> that seemed like such a big deal. So did you, was that your aspirational that you wanted to go east to Ivy? Or uh, what, what pushed you to Harvard? I didn't, so I was very interested in environmental programs. And it was very funny. One of the reasons I remember being excited about Harvard was they had a journal that was just focused on students and, and environmental topics. And I remember that being a big factor in my decision that, that I wanted to go to Harvard, and then it shut down my first year there within the, like, the first month. So it's funny that you make these decisions based on these data points that end up being totally irrelevant. You know, that is absolutely, I, what I say, uh, life has a way of interrupting, and we think we're in control, and we're heading down this road, and the most important thing is to be open, and right. serendipity, things, things roll. Um, my mom and dad, when I grew up, had refrains that they kept 
forever ad nauseum telling us, like, I don't care what all the other girls are doing, Valerie, you're not doing it. My father saying, your word is your bond. Did you have any refrains like that growing up from your mom and dad that, that kind of shaped you or, or made you pay attention? Well, it's funny how often I say now to my son things that my parents said to me, which is the first time you start talking like your parents. It's a little bit of a, a funny mo moment when you realize, okay, maybe they did know what they were talking about. And, and I'm afraid now that he's a five-year-old, the one I use most often is one thing at a time, honey, oh. because he always needs everything right away immediately. And yes. Yes. I'm trying to do more about just being present with where I am, which is a big challenge when in a job like Mayor, right, because your phone's always giving you new information, people need you, and to just be with the people who you're with, I think, is so important and well, what, you... One of the things I, I would expect that you get, at, and I know that I did, is that um, how do you balance work and your family, especially being a single mom? And my answer, I wasn't a single mom, but how do you balance work and, and uh, your job? I mean, work and your family? You don't. You juggle it. That's my answer. Sometimes like, it's like a marriage. Sometimes it's 90-10. Sometimes it's 40-60. Uh, what do you think about that? So for me, it is important to carve out time where I'm just with my son and he gets 100% of my attention. I'm very lucky that my family has helped me a lot. I lost my mother this year, but before that, she and my dad were incredibly important, and now my dad is, is really helping me a lot. So he's with my son right now so that I can be here with you. It also means my son comes to a lot of different things with me. Uh, my first, so when you become mayor, you get a police detail, which is a major change in your daily life. And I remember my first weekend as mayor, my son just go shooting off running. And then I go shooting off running because there was cars nearby. And then these poor police officers are looking at themselves like, do we follow her? Yeah. What have we gotten ourselves into? Did, did you want to be a mayor? Uh, not necessarily a mayor. Did you want to be in elective office when, when you grew up? I mean, you are such a, uh, a young, su successful woman. Uh, and I, I, aren't you the youngest mayor that that, that they had in, uh, in Phoenix? For, bi um, for big cities right now, I'm the youngest big city mayor. Yeah, it just shows you how powerful you are. You know, the young, young are very powerful. So uh, it, was, it was a gut check moment for me running because when I, when I filed to run for mayor, there were no millennials leading big cities and no women in the top 15 cities. And so you do look in the mirror and say, no, do, do I look like a mayor to people? Well, that you sure do now. Was there a switch that went off in your mind that made you take, what made you make the move into uh, to being mayor? A, a young woman with a young baby, didn't you run, you, when you were pregnant when you were running? Is that correct? So in the same year, I had a baby, got divorced, moved, and filed to run for mayor. Okay, so what flipped the switch? <laughs> so that's a lot. I don't recommend that yeah. to anyone. Yeah. Well, and it's not been a direct path for me. Growing up, I wanted to be a veterinarian and then got older and got the environmental degree. And I thought I was going to be an entrepreneur in solar energy. So this is very different from that. But I got very involved in the city. Um, first on the environmental commission, trying to push the city to do more in solar and very excited. We're number one for, for solar installed wow. on city facilities, which so some success there. And I found that very rewarding but also spent a lot of time saying what I thought Phoenix could do differently and how we should aim higher. So ran for city council somewhat unexpectedly. I had just finished business school and I had so much student loan debt. And I, I you know, when you run for office, you have to say your personal finances. Yeah. And I was, a, it made me feel very young to be reporting how much student loan debt I had, and I didn't know how people would react to that. But so, it turns out no one reads those. So city council then was your first political experience? Yes. And how long did you sit on city council? About five years. And then again, when you, was there, were you uh, in an, uh, filling an, uh, a vacancy? Was, did you have a primary for mayor? I mean, mayor is nonpartisan in, in your Correct. city, right? So, but what, what gave you that, I mean, what were you thinking? So the first time I think I really thought about running citywide was I had chaired a citywide transportation election and it was the largest city commitment to 
transportation funding of any city in the United States at the time, and just thinking about how for generations it would make a difference for the whole city. The, the night of that election, a reporter put a microphone in my face and said, are you gonna run for mayor? And it was sort of the first time anyone had asked me publicly, and at, at first it just seemed ridiculous to me. But you know, the, the thought starts seeping in and I thought about it. My predecessor as mayor had resigned to run for Congress, or he announced he was gonna step down okay. early, so it was a special election, so okay. not scheduled. But it came at a time my life was really, I guess it felt like in turmoil. Yeah. My mother had just been diagnosed with cancer and she's been sort of an amazing bedrock for me. Yeah. And then my marriage was falling apart while I was pregnant. And that's embarrassing to begin with. Um, I, at the time, could not think of anyone who got divorced while being pregnant. I have since then met many wonderful women who've been willing to share their stories with me. And so I know I'm not the only one, but at the time I felt like I was the only one. Um, a lot of my debut in national publications was for getting divorced, which is mm. not what you want to be yeah. known for. Yeah. And so there was a time when I, I was sort of embarrassed to leave the house while I was pregnant and the, you know, the newspapers had just been covering the divorce. So that's not a very promising way to run for mayor if you're not even wanting to leave the house. So I, I decided it was off the table. I couldn't possibly get divorced, have a baby and file for mayor all in one year, and it just ate me up. But you did. So I sat, I, for so long, um, I would just think about it and the missed opportunity. And uh, I, list, I don't know if I should admit this, but I listened to some 90s country music, and there's all these songs about like, if you get the chance to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. Yeah. And, and you'd hear those songs and be like, oh, I'm sitting it out. I bet you, uh, you were quite an inspiration um, to so many young women, I mean, who looked at you and said, look what, look at the hardships. And uh, as you describe it, they're, at that time, tragic. I mean, losing your mom, losing your husband, or your marriage, mm -hmm. and, uh, and having a baby, you are a profile in courage. My mom used to say that failure in everyone's life was inevitable, but giving up was unforgivable. And... Uh, I had thought at the time people wanted elected officials who were perfect and had their personal lives all neatly in order. And I'm very glad that that is not what people want. It seems like people responded to my personal story and a lot of other people had made big decisions while they were in the middle of huge change as, as well. And there are a bunch of people, mostly women, who were so rooting for me yeah. and who were like, we are gonna be there with you to make sure you can do this. And if you need someone to watch your baby while you go to a debate, we're, we're gonna do it. So my, my son had women with PhDs who were babysitting him and, and people were kind to me if we were, you know, I was trying to have an important conversation and he started crying or whatever. It's, it's all about you, uh, it's all about empathy. Mm -hmm. A fancy word which just means to, uh, to feel as in to absorb. Mm -hmm. And look at the gift that you gave men and women. Because tragedy, you know, when, for my family, when people ask me about grow, my life, they say, oh, you've had so much tragedy. And it's true. But my God, every single family, mm -hmm. every single person has tragedy in their life. And it's, you know, my dad quote again, not how often you get knocked down, it's how quickly you get back up. Mm -hmm. And the, the gift that you gave to the men and women I think is extraordinary. And if no matter what your accomplishments, your political accomplishments, and there are many, I don't think anybody can touch that gift of empathy that you gave. I think, I think that's, the best, that's the best there is. Well, and I feel so lucky for what I've received because I was running, I, I launched the campaign in 2017 when the country was very divided and it was a strange time politically. I think there was not a lot of faith in sort of collective action and can we do things together to make our communities better. But then the way people came in and supported me and helped me get through such a tough time because they believed I would do a good job for Phoenix, well, it was very inspiring. You know, we talk about, we, women, um, my peers, we talk about 
educating young girls to grow into be leaders. But I think it's equally important what we have to pay attention to is young boys, to teach them and show them that they can grow up and, and not be afraid of a powerful woman, not be afraid of a kind woman. What, what are you, what's the biggest thing, and this is such a wide question, but what's the best thing that you think you can impart to your son? If your son grows up to be what, or you'll say, gee, I did a good job. What, what would that be? I hope he'll see me as a good role model, both as a mom, but as a woman, and that women can be in any role they want. I had a proud moment where I was going to have lunch with another mayor, and he asked me, what's her name? And I love that he defaulted to the, the female pronoun. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know that, I mean, that's not the reality for most of America, but I thought it was neat that for him, he just assumed mayors were all women. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, your son's a lucky man, and uh, you're a lucky, you're a fortunate woman to have a, to have a son because uh, they're, they're a rock for you. It is so grounding and so wonderful. No matter what happens at the city, you got him coming home to a great hug. He loves you, him. and you love him. Yes, and that's a, what we're talking about here in in this uh, these series that all politics is personal. So, Mayor, as a Biden, I have to ask you this: What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Mint chocolate chip. Oh, that's Joe's. Yeah, that's good. Taste. That's good. Mm -hmm. Good Taste. smart man. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Someday I would love to be an entrepreneur. A in any particular line of business? So my original plan was always to go into clean tech solar. So maybe someday that's still ahead of me. Okay. One word to describe yourself. Hardworking. Favorite TV show? Oh, that's interesting. Right now, I mostly just watch whatever my son picks, so I have a great uh, knowledge of dinosaur TV shows. Okay. Favorite music? So I, I think I mentioned a lot of my key moments have been country music, but um, one of my favorite days as mayor was when Lizzo came to Phoenix and, oh. and did her concert. Uh, do you have a hidden talent? So I grew up spending hours practicing softball pitching, and I can make a softball spin in many different ways. It's not useful at all. What was your number? Four. Okay. Do you, if you had a superpower, what would it be? I would love to fly. Oh, me too. That was mine. And what is your theme song? So I love Girl on Fire by Alicia Keys. Good. That would be a, a self-description. Here's to hoping. Okay. And it even has a great music video where there's a mom who's trying to be a professional and a mom. Well, I think, that, you, that I think you wear it well. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you to the Stavros Niarchos Foundation. And thank you for joining us in All Politics is Personal.